The three partners, my brother Steve and our partner Barry Worthing and myself, Mark, who started this business about five and a half, so this would be six years in August, and started off not knowing a heck of a lot about axes other than the fact that uh, there's no more axe makers in Maine. And we thought that was pretty ridiculous. So we decided to start the company. Many people aren't aware, but Maine was a very rich axe making state. Uh, and there were hundreds of axe makers at one point in time, and they all dwindled away. And, and, and the last one stopped making axes in Maine more than 20 years ago. And so we brought that back. And what we, what's unique about us is it's a Maine wedge pattern axe, which is unique to Maine. There were lots of different patterns around the country, but no one else made the main wedge, nor does anyone else make the main wedge now, except us. We've broken up the shop into three areas. So this is the metal shop, which is where we do all of the forging and all of the grinding. The equipment really is a gas forge. We're using propane to fire up this forge, heating up the metal. Then we use these hydraulic presses. Those are doing is really squeezing the metal into the shape of an ax. We use a set of dies to do all of that. We've got a pretty small shop, pretty minimal amount of equipment. This first press that we see over here is uh, it's a 50-ton uh, hydraulic press made by a company called Coal Ironworks in Indiana. The die assembly that's in there is a die assembly that I built. That die assembly captures the material uh, so we can square the material, we can capture it and punch the holes for the axes for the eye of the axe on location every single time. How many think have squared in total so far since being here? Yeah. Forge on average 100 a month, or eight months, so that's 800. Yeah. Whew. I mean, if it's anything close to that number, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. I never really thought about it. We went to school together at uh, Maine College of Art. Matsuno and Gabe pretty much just trained me from the ground up. For the most Very part. proud of this one. <laughs> Very proud. I'm the only one forging full time. Uh, I write the production schedule uh, in addition to forging. So we all wear many hats, is, is really how we survive. After we've created something axy looking, something like this, then it's a lot of grinding. We've got these, these belt grinders that we use then to get the axe into its final shape. I'm Jay Love, I grind axes for Brent and Cochran. I take them after they're forged in the furnace and grind them down to their appropriate shape. Then we shine and polish and sharpen, uh, get them ready to go. Once everything has been heat treated and stamped with our logo and the date of manufacture, the year of manufacture and the name of the uh, initial of the craftsman that made it, then it all comes over into this part of the shop, which is our wood shop. And what happens in the wood shop is all of the, the hafting, the handling of an axe. Uh, I am the handle designer and I'm the hafter for Brent and Cochran. So I designed the handles that we use for our Allagash Cruiser and our Durago Belt Axe. And then uh, we get them sent out to the Amish in Ohio and they duplicate our handles for us out of Hickory and they get sent back here where I go through and I grade everything to make sure that everything is up to spec. We have like a 5% rejection rate from them because we are so strict about what we're getting. Give it some real drives. And there you go. Now it's hafted. And all it's left to do is cut that top part off and sand it down. And that's how you make an Allagash Cruiser. Once that's all done, they're hafted, they come over into really our finishing room. They come to us like this, and for a couple of days, we wipe this down with raw linseed oil. After that, we put on a custom leather sheath. These are made for us up in Minot, Maine, to keep it protected because they are wicked sharp. And then they go out like that. It's the craftsmanship and the authenticity. People want to be connected to a store. People just want to be connected, period. You know, and I think that it's the, everyone's so buried in computers and social media and games and stuff like that. There's something very uh, re refreshing and reassuring about seeing someone work a, a, a physical craft. 
you know, like going to your shop and seeing looms being made in craft people making boots, right? It's something they can't do. It's something they watch and they're like, I can't believe this is still being made like this. And then they see the quality of the product and it's something that's just, it makes it special. It's not just buying something off the rack.